Welcome everyone, my name is the Coaster King, and in today's video, we'll be counting down the top 15 Six Flags parks. Unfortunately, I haven't been to every single one. Specifically, I haven't been to La Ronde or Six Flags in Mexico, but that won't stop me from ranking the parks and giving my best opinion as to where I think they rank. All of these parks are a ton of fun to go to, and I don't want to come off as a spoiled brat when I rank some parks lower than others, I like all of these parks, I enjoyed every single one I've been to thoroughly, and they're all a blast. Please don't get triggered by my opinions, and be sure to let me know down in the comment section if you disagree with one of my opinions. At 15th place is Frontier City. This park is notorious for being the worst Six Flags park, or at least one of the worst ones. But before we talk about why it's known for being bad, let's talk about some of the pros of the park. The park doesn't really feel like a Six Flags park. Since it hasn't been one for super long, the park has an atmosphere and environment that really differs from other Six Flags parks. There aren't Snickers and Coke ads placed at every corner, at least yet, and the rides aren't all named Insert Name of Superhero Here Ride. This makes for awesome and somewhat unique experiences at a Six Flags park that you might not get elsewhere. However, I am a coaster enthusiast. The main reason I go to theme parks is for the rides and coasters, and that's where Frontier City lacks. Diamondback is the old half of Lightning Loops from Six Flags Great Adventure and runs pretty rough. Silver Bullet is a Schwarzkopf looping coaster that doesn't even come close to Shockwave at Six Flags over Texas, which, by the way, is a severely underrated roller coaster. Outside of another inverted coaster called Steel Lasso, the park really doesn't have that much else to offer. The lack of even mid-tier rides make it, makes it the worst Six Flags park, in my opinion. I wish there was one ride that was even top 50 worthy, making me hope for RMC Raptor, but until I get that, I think it deserves a spot here. At 14th place is Great Escape. This park used to be the known worst Six Flags park, but just like Frontier City, it is different from other parks in some ways. Just like Frontier City, it doesn't have the classic DC themed coaster. There's no Superman the Ride, no Batman the Ride, no Superman Ultimate Flight, making it unique in that way. However, it does get closer to the other Six Flags parks with a ton of ads placed all over the place. However, I do think that it's better than Frontier City. Comet is above average wooden coaster and is, in my opinion, better than any ride at Frontier City by a lot. It's a solid wooden coaster. And in addition, they also have a great flat ride in the Extreme Supernova and a bobsled coaster that came from Great Adventure. Steven Demon gives an instant headache, which isn't great, but the Adriatic Outlaw, that new flat ride, does look like a ton of fun, although I haven't personally been on it. Great Escape is marginally better than Frontier City, really just for the rides that it offers. At 13th place is La Ronde, a park I haven't been to. From what I've seen, the park does appear to have amazing views. The fact that it runs across the lake and makes almost a full circle puts it in a great setting. This setting is one of the best in the chain and is a pretty cool environment for a park. La Ronde also has some decent coasters. It's better than Great Escape and Frontier City, mainly for Goliath, the almost hyper at the park. A B&M hyper even if it's not 200 feet, of any sort, beats out Comet and any other ride at Great Escape. They also have a, have a Vacoma SLC, which is not a highlight, and also a Batman clone. Batman clones are pretty underrated and give great rides. The park has two B&Ms and this alone makes it better than Great Escape. At 12th place is Darien Lake, a park that Six Flags owns kind of on and off. Six Flags has been investing in the park, and I can't wait for them to RMC Predator, but for now, their standout ride is Ride of Steel, probably the worst name for a coaster ever. But the ride itself is pretty underrated. The straight track is funky, and the helixes are kind of confusing and, and not super enjoyable, but it does offer a solid airtime throughout the ride and is a great time. It's fast and tall and is a solid hyper. They also have Tantrum, a Gershaw Eurofighter, these rides are a ton of fun and are a perfect fit for the park. This park is somewhat similar to the Ron in terms of rankings, but beat it out due to, due to having a higher volume of coasters with Mind Eraser, Predator, and Viper 
all rounding out the lineup. At 11th place is Six Flags St. Louis, a ranking that may make some people upset. Their standout attraction is the boss in my opinion. This is a great wooden coaster that stands out over 120 feet tall. It's a long and enjoyable ride that has a solid counterparty to Mr. Freeze, a launch coaster. Mr. Freeze is a little rough, actually it's very rough. It'll probably give you a headache, but it is super intense. The drop is insane and you will gray out every single time. I genuinely enjoy this ride a ton. The lineup is rounded out with rides like American Thunder, Batman, Screaming Eagle, and Ninja. These are all solid rides that are great supporting coasters. I think the park is a B&M hyper away from moving up three to four spots in these rankings. At 10th place is Six Flags America, a far underrated park. Their standout is Superman Ride of Steel, a literal clone of Ride of Steel at Darien Lake. The reason why America is underrated is for the other coasters. Joker's Jinx is a solid launch. It's fast, intense, and a ton of fun. Its intensity makes it an absolute blast and it's a solid coaster for the park. America also has Batwing when it's open. I've gone three times to the park and Batwing is only open once. When I rode it, it was a solid ride and I prefer it far over the Superman flying clones at the other parks. It's a unique ride to experience at a Six Flags Park and when it operates it's the top three in the park. They also have a Raging Cajun, a solid spinning coaster, Wild One, Roar, two wooden coasters, Mind Eraser, and a B&M floorless named Firebirds, which, although being one of the worst floorless coasters I've ever been on, is still an above average coaster. I think the park is slightly above Six Flags St. Louis, just because Ride of Steel honestly could beat out any ride at the park and Joker's Jinx and Batwing ran the lineup pretty well. At ninth place is Six Flags Discovery Kingdom. Their standout ride is the Joker, an RMC hybrid version of Roar at Six Flags America. This ride isn't the best RMC, let's be honest, but it is an RMC. Joker is better than any ride at Six Flags America or Six Flags St. Louis or any other park we mentioned earlier. This is literally the reason it ranks higher than those other parks. Discovery Kingdom works well with the height limit. Medusa is an above average to average B&M Flores coaster. I rank it very similar to Superman at Fiesta Texas. Superman also has a solid launch. I actually didn't get to ride it, but I have been on the same exact ride at Busch Gardens and I enjoyed it a ton. These rides are underrated and add to the lineup very well. The Flash, Vertical Velocity, Batman, Kong, eh, never mind, not Kong, and the Wonder Woman are also great rides and are a ton of fun. At 8th place is Six Flags Mexico. Their standout ride is Medusa, another RMC hybrid. I haven't been to the park so I really can't comment on the ride, but it seems like an average RMC to above average. Just this makes it better than Discovery Kingdom. An above average RMC is easily a top 25 coaster for most enthusiasts, and it looks somewhat similar to Storm Chaser and may even Twisted Timbers, which are both amazing rides. Mexico also has Superman, a hyper coaster that not a ton of people have been on, but if, he, if half of what El Toro Ryan says is true, it's an amazing coaster. Dark Knight and Batman round, round out the lineup, but Mexico is better than Discovery Kingdom mainly for the fact that Medusa and Superman could both be better than the Joker. At 7th place is Six Flags over Texas. Their standout ride is New Texas Giant, another RMC. This coaster, even though it's the first RMC and doesn't invert, has some insane injector airtime and is a solid coaster. It breaks my personal top 25 and throws Ryder out of their seat constantly. Over Texas also has Titan, a below average hyper coaster, but still a hyper coaster. They also are home to Shockwave, likely the most underrated coaster I've ever been on. The ride has a ton of airtime, is super intense, and never has a line. They also have a Batman clone, a bobsled coaster, and Mr. Freeze. Not to mention the park will also have Aquaman Power Splash very soon, hopefully at least, which is the first in the chain. I think the park is a little underrated, and they are home to a ton of solid coasters. Their lineup is very well-rounded, and the park itself has a great atmosphere. The food is above average for a Six Flags park, and the theming is solid, and it does have a good environment and location, being right next to two large stadiums in AT&T Stadium 
and Globe Life Field, which is where the Rangers play. At six places, Six Flags New England, the second Six Flags park that I ever visited. I love this park. Their best coaster is Wicked Cyclone, and it's easily a top five RMC and probably a top 25 coaster in the world. It's ranked sixth in my rankings as my third favorite RMC behind Vengeance and Twisted Timbers, and I love this coaster. It has a compact layout with some insane airtime and some awesome inversions to the zero G rolls. It also has Superman, I read that when it was Bizarro, it was my number two coaster. And this has one of the best layouts of any coaster in the world. Some insane airtime, some great views of the river there, and it's a shame that they changed their restraints and got rid of that music. It's still an amazing coaster and a way above average hyper coaster, even with those restraints though. They also have Batman the Ride, a solid floor of this coaster, Riddler's Revenge, Flashback, Joker, and probably going to have a new coaster in the next 2-3 years. Their 1-2 punch makes the park absolutely amazing and easily is worth the 6th ranking. At 5th place is Six Flags Over Georgia. Over Georgia has a ton of solid coasters and honestly pinpointing the best one isn't the easiest thing in the world. Twisted Cyclone is a ton of fun. It's a new RMC and although it's pretty short, it still gives great airtime moments and I absolutely love it. Goliath is a top tier b and hyper coaster. It's intense, you'd offer some great floater airtime. Goliath and Twisted are a great one-two punch, but the park stands out because of the supporting coasters it has. Daredevil Dive honestly isn't talked about enough in the community, probably because no one wants to go on it to wait in that line. The Riddler isn't as good as Shockwave over Texas, but it is still solid. Georgia Scorcher is good, and rides like Great American Dream Machine, Superman, Blue Hawk, and Batman all round out the lineup well, and it's easily deserving of a top 5 spot. At 4th place is Six Flags Fiesta Texas, the best looking Six Flags park. The location is amazing. By far the best in the in the chain. The quarry wall is awesome and rides that interact with it are even cooler. Picture spots in this park are great and the theming makes a great atmosphere. The park has also a, ton, a great collection of coasters. Iron Rattler is obviously the star attraction. I think Rattler is comparable to Wicked Cyclone and I absolutely love it. I Rattler just ranked below Wicked Cyclone and also Wonder Woman is a ton of fun. The ride is short, but it's super intense and gets you flying out of your seat. Superman is a top tier being at floor of this coaster, and although I haven't been on Dr. Diabogles yet, I don't even think anyone has, it looks like a, a solid dive coaster and is probably a top three in the park. The support coasters are also solid. Poltergeist, Goliath, Batman, and Pandemonium are all fun, and I think it's better than over Georgia due to its location and the fact that Iron Rather and Wonder Woman are just unbelievably good. Starting out our top three is Six Flags Great America. I think we can all agree about the top three, but maybe the order for each person differs. But let's talk about the pros of the park first. Goliath is an average RMC and is a ton of fun. An average RMC is a great coaster and this thing offers some great airtime and intensity. They also have Raging Bull, a very polarizing coaster. Some love it, some hate it. I'm personally on the side that the ride isn't an above average hyper coaster, it's more towards the below average side. The airtime doesn't really rival Mako, Candemonium, Diamondback, but it is still intense and a ton of fun. The park is also home to Max Force, an underrated launch coaster with some insane intensity. X-Flight is the only wing coaster in the chain, and although it doesn't offer the most forces in the world, and definitely, definitely has a rattle, it is a coaster that's not talked about enough, and it's a ton of fun. Batman, Superman, and American Eagle are all also solid. The reason why it's not one or two, in my opinion, is because it doesn't have an elite coaster. No coaster at the park is likely to be an enthusiast top 10. The park, the parks above it both have amazing coasters that are top 10 rides for most enthusiasts. And although Great America has many great coasters, they don't have that any that many amazing, best in the world elite ones, and honestly, I don't think they have any. At second place is Six Flags Great Adventure. Easily the best ride in the park is El Toro. Toro is my number two behind Vengeance, but honestly not by a lot. This ride offers some ridiculous airtime. You are thrown out of your seat with a drop in the two hills. These are likely the best airtime moments of any coaster I've been on. It's super intense, is a solid good length, 
and the airtime moments over the rolling thunder hill are notoriously insane. Nitro is an above average BM hyper and offers some great floater airtime. This ride is super long and going through the woods through great night rides are just unparalleled. King the Ka, the world's tallest coaster, is insane. Front row ride doesn't compare to much at all. Jersey Double is insane, offers a ton of airtime. The park has a solid collection with Medusa, Superman, Batman, Green Lantern, and Skull Mountain all rounding out the lineup. The coaster lineup is absolutely insane and is a ton of fun to be at this park. First place is Six Flags Magic Mountain. With 19 coasters, Magic Mountain has the most coasters of any park in the chain. X2 is a super unique coaster, at least in the states, that is insanely intense. Twisted Classes is an above average RMC that can't be understated. Tatsu, Full Throttle, Wonder Woman, West Coast Racers, the fact that this, they have this many elite coasters makes it the best Six Flags Park by a lot. They don't have anything as good as El Toro, but the fact that they have so many great roller coasters makes it the best Six Flags Park. If Wonder Woman was not a thing and the park wasn't adding the Jersey Devil clone, I would probably put Great Adventure above it. But the fact that they have this insane of a top 5 makes the park the best in the chain. But with that, that's going to do it for today's video. Be sure to let me know in the comment section how you would rank the Six Flags Parks and what you think about my opinions. Be sure to like. I'll see you guys next time.